What could possibly be wrong with the Monroe Avenue Safety Project Plan by the New York State Department of Transportation? There are two types of crashes that account for a large portion of the many crashes in this area. One category is left turn crashes. So part of the safety improvement plan is to create a new additional left turn at 590 South. Hmm, didn't I just say that left turn crashes is one of the categories that account for a large portion of crashes? So they're creating a new left turn? They're calling this part of the safety improvement plan? Does that make any sense? Let's move along. The New York State DOT says that turning left across three lanes of traffic contributes greatly to the number of crashes. Their solution is to reduce the number of lanes from three to two. A large percentage of the eastbound crashes, 30 to 38 percent, occur within this last 360 feet before Clover Street. This is the same section where there will still be a third lane for right turns. Won't those crashes still occur? Isn't 30 to 38 percent significant to the New York State DOT? What about creating a safe alternative with a U-turn? During the July 31, 2013 public meeting, New York State DOT staff indicated that space is not sufficient for U-turns. August 28, 2013, as we explained, we cannot make a good U-turn system work on this Monroe Avenue segment. As it turns out, U-turns could fit on Monroe Avenue. The nearest example is at the corner car wash where passenger vehicles routinely navigate a 180 degree turn to enter the wash line. Other examples of working U-turn space can be found at the intersection of Route 441 and 250 in Penfield and show that the New York State DOT is wrong. When the New York State DOT says it can't do it, it means they are not capable. However, it could be done by someone competent in road and intersection design or just a layman. Let's take a look at crash analysis diagrams. The diagrams depict an intersection where the right turn lane is controlled by the signal light. These diagrams are wrong, as those using the 590 on-ramp never stop. You may want to pause the video. During the entire evaluation, planning, and design process, no one on the team corrected the diagrams, and they still were used during the public presentation in July 2013. Is it possible their whole analysis is wrong? Is it possible their whole solution based on incorrect analysis, based on faulty diagrams is wrong. Is your confidence in the New York State DOT a little shaky now? For the westbound section heading towards the 590 North on-ramp, there is another speed issue. From Clover Street to 590 North, there are no stoplights, stop signs, or yields. Drivers planning to go north on 590 anticipate the unrestricted flow and accelerate above the posted speed of 35 miles per hour. This speed differential between those accelerating to 55 miles an hour plus and those stopping is a contributing factor with rear end crashes. Within the New York State DOT project documents is the following information. 2.3.3.2 Critical Design Elements Design Speed The design speed standard criterion is 45 miles per hour and both the existing condition and the proposed condition are also 45 miles per hour. The minimum radius for 45 miles per hour is 711 feet. However, the existing and proposed radius is 1910 feet, which corresponds to a design speed in excess of 65 miles per hour. As long as drivers are able to drive 65 miles per hour, they will continue to pose a risk to other drivers, pedestrians, and bicyclists. This failure to modify the ramp design speed amounts to a critical design failure. These are the main examples when I say there are flaws in the proposed plan. Though the New York State Department of Transportation was presented with these concerns, the design was not altered and the Commissioner of Transportation never responded. Do you feel safe?